Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26. Starting with verse 31. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the shepherd of the flock, the sheep of the flock, will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered and said to him, Even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that this night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are standing before you, seeing ourselves as Peter and all the others. Have mercy on us. In Jesus' name, through the Holy Spirit, amen. Humble or stumble? Humble versus stumble. I would like to invite you to imagine a soccer team. You know how many players a soccer team has? How many? Eleven. Yeah, we have some FIFA people here. So imagine that soccer team right before the final game of uh, World Cup. And before that final game, it doesn't matter if uh, it's the Argentinian or the France team, the coach speaks with the players about different scenarios that can happen in the final game. He points out to them that they have to give their best, but at the same time, they have to be prepared for anything that happens. Because in that very stressful and tense situation before the final game, you are just a human. And what if after the 90 minutes and then after 15 plus 15 minutes, you still have a draw? What does happen then? If you have a draw, then they will do the penalty kicks, the shootouts. And in that situation, it is you with the ball in front of the goalkeeper, and there are things that can happen. 
because of the stress, because of the tension, you can possibly trip up and kick the ball the wrong way and the ball can go wide or the goalkeeper can catch the ball or who knows what can happen and then what? And everybody is listening carefully but one messy player, I don't know if you know the definition of a messy player in soccer, a messy player is somebody that thinks he's messy. So, one messy player walks up to the coach and he says, listen, if all these trip up, I will never trip up. What do you think about this would-be messy? Cocky. What is wrong with him? Is he all right? See, Matthew chapter 26 introduces us into this scenario when after the communion service, after the first communion service, Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says, all of you, all of you, Will, may, will be made to stumble. The word there is scandalizo, which can be translated as trip up. All of you will, be, will trip up because of me this night. In other words, Jesus will be the scandal and he will be the stumbling block. They will trip up because of Jesus himself. And Jesus says, don't be scared, don't be too concerned about that, because it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. And he's quoting Zechariah chapter 13, where God in a prophetic insight gives us, before it happens, that Jesus will be suffering in ways to which he did not contribute. And you would think it was the Jews, it was the Romans, it was humanity that uh, gave him that strike of suffering, but that's not the full picture. If you go to Isaiah chapter 53, Yet it pleased the Lord, it pleased Yahweh to bruise, to crush him, that is Jesus Christ. He, Yahweh, has put him to grief. I will strike the shepherd, Jesus quotes. Yes, God the Father did that to his son. God gave his son. It's not because it was the Father's initiative on His own without the consent of the Son. In fact, the Son asked for it because if you read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, you will see that it was given to Jesus Christ to suffer by the grace or by the favor of God. It is like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, asked for it. He went to the Father and said, Father, give me this grace, give me this favor. By the grace, by the favor of God, Jesus Christ became our grace. I will strike the shepherd. And as a result, Jesus says, the sheep will be scattered. But he goes on with verse uh, 32 there in Matthew 26, but after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. And we know from the Bible that after resurrection, Jesus indeed went to Galilee and had a big reunion with his disciples there. 
This happened after briefly meeting with them in Judea, in Jerusalem. But then somebody comes into this picture, verse 33, Peter. Peter, he's a strong guy. He's the messy player. A messy player that thinks he's messy. Peter answered and said to him, nah, even if all are made to trip up because of you, I will never be made to trip up. Oh, this is a very skillful, very strong, very decided, very confident player, isn't he? Verse 34, and Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, that's the word in Greek, Amen, I say to you, that this night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And now you would expect Messi to pull back and say, okay, okay, I, I, I think you're right. I think I've been too arrogant, too lofty. I should be more humble. But he goes on one more step. Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And for that sense of security, of um, self-reliance, some would even clap and say, good job, Peter. Well done. But Peter has an issue here. Peter knows some elements of what is good. You know, in the Old Testament, God speaks to the, through the prophet Micah, and he says, this is what is good for you to do. This is what you should be doing. Do what? Justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your Lord. If somebody has a sense of justice, Peter does have a sense of justice, you will see him later when he's faced with that escort that comes to catch Jesus and take him into custody, he pulls out his sword and... Because it's unfair. What Jesus is going to go through is unfair, and it is unfair. Only that you don't take into account that... God said, I will strike the shepherd. This is not only the Jews. This is not only the Romans. Yes, it's unfair. And do justice is important. It is crucial. Actually, I believe one of the major problems we have in our churches, Seventh-day Adventists and not only, is that we focus on mercy in almost every church, you have ministries that do mercy. How many churches do you know where there is at least one ministry of the church that focuses on justice? Well, no, no, but that's how it starts. Do justice. Do justice. Then love mercy. And then... Walk humbly with your God. But you can imagine this chronologically and think, okay, so first I'm going to do justice, then I'm going to show mercy, and then in the end I will walk humbly with my Lord. But that's not the point, it seems. It seems that if all three are not together, you're going to mess up. And Peter does come out very strong in justice. You know, I remember it was long ago, not too long ago, but long enough so I can tell the story. I was in 
my first district of churches, it was uh, a few weeks, maybe months into my ministry, when somebody that had a very humble look came to me and asked me, Pastor, have you ever seen a sheep that bites? I said, a sheep that bites, like biting grass or biting people? Well, biting people, he said. A sheep that bites people. Have you ever seen a sheep that bites people? And I said, yeah, this guy is going to give me now a prophecy lesson about the beast that has horns like a lamb and the mouth like a dragon. I said, no, no, I have not. It's only a prophetic picture. No, no, pastor, this is real. In this church here, there are many that are sheep that bite. Hmm, interesting. But pastor, I am not like them. I would never... And you know how this goes. I would never. And I will always. And at those times, and those days, I didn't know exactly what that meant. But I, I kind of went home thinking about this picture of a sheep that bites. And indeed, pretty soon, I did see a sheep that could bite. Do you know who that was? the person that came to me and he said, I would never and I will always. That's Peter. Even if I have to die with you, if all these fall, if all these stumble, if all these strip up, I will never, I will not, and the Greek says, I will not, I will no not deny you. It's a, a double negative. I will no, not deny you. And now you can go on thinking about Peter, but there is a problem. Go to the next slide, please. You know what that, is, that says? And so said all the disciples. So if you thought it was only Peter... Mm -mm. You know, it's easy to read the Bible when everything applies to somebody else. You have a negative character there, and all the bad things belong to the negative character. Peter, Peter, he's the bad boy. He's the messy guy. No, no. And all did the same. So said all the disciples. And then, after Jesus is resurrected, Matthew 28 says that they indeed went back to Galilee. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had appointed for them, verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some have, some doubted. Some had doubts. You know, I don't know how this year has worked for you, 2022. This Sabbath morning is a moment of worship. You may be here worshiping. We have been worshiping. But you may be one of those that have doubts. Matthew 28 continues in verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. To whom does Jesus speak here? To those that worship or to those that have doubts or to both those that worship and have doubts? 
All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19, go therefore. Go how? If you reiterate what Micah says, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly, which one belongs to that go? Walk humbly, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all teachings that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. If you find yourself in that precarious situation where you stumble because you have not been humble. Jesus, when he reconnects with them and they worship him, but some have doubts, Jesus gives this assignment, go to each one of them no matter if they doubted or not. And that to me is amazing. Because whenever we doubt, we may have the tendency to say, okay, I have my doubts. I better sit down and do nothing. No, Jesus says, go. You go too. Yeah, but I have doubts. Yes, but... Stand up and go. Go and teach everything. As Jesus reiterates the Old Testament, he says, yes, these should be done. But you should not omit those that are even more important from the law. And that's the Old Testament by and large. He's speaking about tithing. Very important that I would like to thank everybody for your contribution to the well-being of this church in all different ways throughout 2022. Your offerings, your tithes that go forward to the conference and then they contribute to the mission of the world church. Yes, it's important. All those aspects are important. Jesus, Jesus says, do those things, but do not miss what is most important in the law. What is that? Justice. Same order. Mercy. And for walk humbly with your Lord is what? Faithfulness. That's the word Jesus uses. So, Jesus says this morning, as we are reconnecting with him, here in Galilee, this is, your Galilee this morning, worshiping together and maybe having some doubts, Jesus says, go. I am with you always, even to the end of the ages of the age. Amen.